The establishing shot of the video is a panoramic, which I felt would be useful in revealing the London backdrop of the narrative, as well as the key figure in the shape of the Crystal White's lead singer Adam Ferguson. I felt that the use of titles was key as the duration of the shot is quite long. I took influence for both the sweeping panoramic shot and titles from The Stripes and their song Hometown Girls. The Stripes are a young band from Ireland with, a with ages ranging from 17 to 19, very similar to that of the Crystal Whites. The influence of such a band was not only key due to their style of music, but furthermore their similar age range would allow almost certain success using conventions from their work. The use of titles to partner the panoramic shot was key because of the band being unsigned. This was the first music video produced for the band and so therefore I felt it necessary to reveal the name of the artist and song at the beginning of the video for self-promotion. The initial panoramic shot finishes with focus upon the lead singer and songwriter of the band Adam Ferguson who is the only member of the band who features in the narrative side of the video. Despite not all indie rock music videos containing a narrative, I felt that a 3 minute plus video containing just performance shots of the band could become repetitive and slightly dull. Furthermore, the use of a narrative sequence allowed us to explain the feeling and story behind the writing of the song. The narrative half of the video only features the lead singer and songwriter. This is a common common occurrence within the indie rock genre. Other than the band shots, narrative with indie rock music videos tend to only include the lead singer of the band, such as Alex Turner of the Arctic Monkeys or Richard Ashcroft of The Verve. I also felt this was the right route to take, as the songwriter of the band is the only one who knows and feels emotion behind the song and who would give a relevant and real persona in the narrative. The second scene of the video consists of an establishing shot of the band playing. I felt that scenes of the band playing was essential to add into the video as it is a key convention of the indie rock genre. The genre as a whole can be seen to contrast with the genres such as pop and rap which often use groups of songwriters to produce music. The indie rock genre prides itself on creating raw music with instruments and I felt it was necessary to show this in the Crystal White's music video. The establishment of the band playing also brought about the contrast between dark and light setting, a convention of not only music videos but a lot of general movie creations to add meaning and distinction between scenes. The dark scenes of the narrative can be seen to capture the sadness of a dysfunctioning relationship and the light scenes, although the same, create a more positive feeling with all three band members playing together. The setting of the band scene was key. It was set in a small mar white marquee type building situated within a park. This low key setting was important to the band as this is where they play, write songs and practice for gigs. So I felt it necessary to include it in their first video. Furthermore, the low key understated setting of the video alluded to the conventions of the typical indie rock genre where the music played takes hierarchy over where it is played. I took influence from bands such as Bombay Bicycle Club and their song Always Like This, which is filmed in various areas such as outside houses, garages and in a park similar to the Crystal Whites. The use of the park filled, filled conventions of often understated indie rock music videos as well as providing a free destination with sentimental value for the band. Ideal regarding their unsigned status and my group's low budget of production. Throughout the band scenes it was very important to include a range of shots and angles as seen in my research. The video featured numerous close-up shots and extreme close-up shots of the lead singer giving personal connection between lyrics and audience. Other shots such as wide angle shots were also used as a convention of the genre allowing us to feature the whole band in one frame. One key convention which was, was presented frequently and successfully in the Crystal Whites music video was close-up shots to instruments. In my research, nearly every indie rock music video which featured band scenes contained close-up shots of the instruments being played, adding emphasis to the raw music being created, a convention in itself of the genre. During my research, I found that editing in indie rock music videos was very simple, opposing genres such as rap and pop. 
The simple use of transitions was key to revealing the clean, crisp footage we had shot. Other key conventions was cutting to the beat. The transition of shots was focused upon the changing of the music track. T cutting to the beat was especially important as the video included instruments, which meant the playing of instruments had to match the timing of the soundtrack. The key timing of drums and guitar solos was, was, was specifically important and allowed us to create a realistic looking music video. Furthermore, another key element of editing was lip syncing. Every music video with the artist singing has to have consistent lip syncing and this again allowed us to create a professional looking video fulfilling general conventions of the music video. The mise-en-scene of the video also allowed us to fulfil many conventions of the indie rock genre. Firstly, the use of instruments set the ideal scene for an, for an indie rock band. The use of drums, bass and electric guitar are the three staple instruments which make up the, the sound of the genre and visuals of them in the video allowed us to produce a connection between the instruments and their impact on the music of the Crystal Whites. Another key aspect of mise-en-scene within the band scenes was the clothes worn by the band. The indie rock genre is well known for being very fashionable, however, unlike other genres, fashion is not forced and bands only wear in videos what they would usually wear. In the band scene, one piece of, of clothing seen in indie rock music videos is the Green Parker, popularised by the mod culture and bands such as Oasis. Furthermore, skinny jeans worn by the band shows their indie rock style and following on from this, the influence they have taken from other bands. The leather jacket worn by lead singer Adam Ferguson in the band scenes shows the influence and fashion conventions of the rock genre, while the barber jacket and New Balance trainers worn by drummer Joe Sprague suggests a more indie stance. As opposed to the conventions of the indie rock genre filled by the band scenes of the video, the narrative sequence in places can be seen to borrow conventions from the likes of the rap and pop genres. The main part of the narrative sequence is the lead singer Adam Ferguson following the camera along the South Bank in London. I took particular influence for this shot from the Coldplay music video for their song Yellow, which contains the lead singer Chris Martin following the camera down the beach for the whole duration of the song. However, where the narrative takes a twist, is the borrow convention by using a girl to illustrate a breaking relationship alluding to the lyrics of the song. The use of a girl to illustrate the lyrics of the song is usually seen as a set convention in rap and pop videos such as the music video for Chris Brown's Autumn Leaves. Despite this not being a traditional convention of the indie rock genre I deemed it necessary to show meaning behind the lyrics of the song which would also help to add another dimension to the music video. The camera shots and angles of the narrative scenes were very basic, aligning with conventions of the indie rock genre. The main shot throughout was a close-up shot of the lead singer following the camera. Other key shots included a wide-angle shot to fit both characters of the narrative in the frame, and a side-angle shot of Adam Ferguson singing at the end. The final shot was one of slightly longer distance, showing a, t a detachment from the relationship and a fitting end to the song. Similarly to the band scenes, editing of the narrative sequence was very understated once again, fitting with the genre conventions. The key element of overall editing was the use of narrative for verses and a return to the band scenes during the chorus. Two main diverse bits of editing during the narrative sequence were firstly the slow motion element used to add emphasis to the lead singer walking away from the girl, and secondly, the use of focus at the end scene, which, would actually be which was actually produced through camera work. Although these two editing additions do not directly fill the indie rock genre conventions, I felt they add emphasis to the lyrical emphasis and aesthetics of the music video. The final scene, finishing with the landmark Big Ben, was key. I decided to set the narrative of in London, as it is the home city of the band and produces a sentimental feeling as well as letting viewers of the video know where the band are from. I took personal influence from the Enemies music video for their hit song Be Somebody, which shows them playing at the Rico Arena in their hometown of Coventry. Unlike other genres, indie rock genre takes pride 
in where they are from, as it is a key and as it has a key and large effect on the music that they write. So I thought this was a key convention to fill for the two anyone video. Finally, the mise en scène and fashion was also key in the narrative sequence. The dark backdrop created a fitting setting for the lyrical makeup of the and verses of the song, and furthermore brought brought out the London scenes behind. The clothes worn by Adam, the lead singer, were very conventional of the indie style, with rounded glasses, a floral shirt and a green barber jacket, a natural and, uh, and unforced fashion sense.